do an example on how to use the um, Python C API with NGL. So the basic premise of this is that the some of the students are trying to write some uh, crowd simulation and things like that. And instead of hard coding the behaviors of the agents, it's much better to be able to script this in some way. And one of the easiest ways of doing this is by embedding the Python script editor into your application, loading in a Python script, and the agent basically run that script each frame, update some key variables, and that then responds to how the agent behaves. So in this example, what I've got is I've got an agent class here that's got a position, a speed, and a direction. They're all NGL vectors, so basic um, data types. Um, in fact, I think they're actually um, NGL vect3s in my example, so I should change that. And what we're going to do is expose those in the um, Python script to be variables that it can access. And in this case, they're going to be called pos, dir, and speed. And they're going to be Python um, lists, because Python lists are mutable, i.e. we can change them. Um, we could, for example, if we wanted to just pass read-only values and make them um, tuples instead, which are immutable. So the first thing we need to do is to have a read of the Python C API reference manual. And there are some um, quite basic examples in here of how we can extend Python C and C++, but also how we can embed um, Python, which is what I've done. So the core is what we're going to do, we're going to load in a simple text Python script. We're then going to start up one instance of the Python interpreter and grab access to the main of that script. Now, in Python, we have um, double underscore main, which is the um, main access point of the program that's running. That has a dictionary that keeps all of the global data types. And we are then going to use that to um, communicate between our different elements. So, <coughs> The first thing, we need to start the Python interpreter. And I'm doing that once in my GL window class here. So in GL window, I've got this um, function call here called pyinitialize. And what that does is it basically initializes the Python interpreter and it gets it ready for use. Now, the main way that we can communicate with Python and RC programs is via this abstraction called pi object. Again, it's worth going and having a read of the documentation here and having a look at the main pi object um, data type here, and it will tell you more about it. But basically, all object types are extensions of this type. So it's um, a bit like m object in Maya and things like that. It's, it's an abstract type that we then have to convert to and from depending upon our context. And in this case, I'm creating two Pi objects. One is main, which is basically going to be our module that we're going to import, our underscore main module. And another one called dict, which is short for our dictionary. This is going to grab our dictionary. So here, I use the Pi import module, and I say I want the module main. We can obviously use this to import other modules if we wish. So any Python scripts within the path can be imported as a module and then we can run functions in that. In this case, what I want is a, a free-running interpreter, effectively, so I've just loaded in main, and I'm going to use that. And then next, I'm grabbing a Python object for my dictionary um, from the module main, and those um, are going to be used for the two-way two communication with our agents. So in this case, I'm passing both of these every time I construct a new agent object, which it's what I'll look at next. So the agent object, very simple. It's basically a sphere. It has position, speed, and direction. When I construct it, I pass in my Python object and my dictionary and a string which is going to represent the path to the Python script that I want to run. 
Next, I've got various um, usual classes, a destructor, an update method, which is going to do all of the main Python hard work, a draw method, which is just going to draw basic OpenGL, reload script, which is going to reload our scripts. And as you can see, I've got three NGLVec3s here for my speed, my direction, and my position. I've got a std string, which is going to be my script that I load in and run each frame. I'm storing the file name so I can reload it. And then this is the hooks where we hook into our Python objects. So I've got here main, which is um, passed from our program previously, so it's a pointer to the main um, Python code being run. Dict, which is the dictionary. And then I'm going to replicate for each of my attributes that I want to expose from my C++ class a Python object which is going to be the link, the bridge, between the um, two objects. So for example, um, I've got mpyPos here. If we go back to the diagram, effectively the link is going to be mpyPos is going to link pos here and pos there. This is going to be the bridge. We have to convert from some data type to this and then back from some data type to this. And that's going to be the core of our processing. And then that, again, is replicated for direction and speed. So if we look at our agent um, class, the first core thing we do in the constructor, we're going to default a few things, so default script to zero. We'll call the reload script method, which I'll talk about later, but basically that's just going to read in a C string from a text file. I'm going to set my default attributes to be default values. Now, I noticed when I was running this first that for some reason, um, as we all know, Python, um, when it gets a variable passed to it, will set it to a default value. So if we pass in 1, it will set it to an integer. If we pass in 1.0, it will create it as a float, it's dynamically typed. And although I'm using type-specific conversion values, it seems even in Python, if I don't set these variables here to be floating point numbers, it was setting them to integers and I wasn't getting floating point mathematics. So um, something to be wary of, I, I will investigate further, but by setting those to be floats, it seemed to work, even though the internal data types themselves are floats. So it seems as though there's no implicit conversion. Um, so the first thing um, from the Python point of view is that I'm creating these Python objects now, in this case is pylist new with three elements. So what this is doing is it's saying that this is representing a Python list object and I want it to have three elements, which in this case is going to be x, y, and z. And I do the same for direction and speed. For example, if it was a string, it would be pystring new. If it was a double and so on, there's various ones look up in the API, integers, um, strings, um, tuples and so on. But in this case I'm just keeping it quite simple. The reload script as you can see bogs down the C++. We create an input file stream, check to see that open was successful, then we just read in the entire file and then that's closing that script file. So there's nothing um, complicated about that and script now is a std string that contains the Python script that we're going to load in. And this is where all the sort of hard work happens. So first thing we have to do every frame we are going to update our Python objects to have the current value of our C++ class attributes. So in this case pylist set item I want to set the Python object, pypos, I want the zeroth element. Now I need to do an explicit conversion, so it's apply float from double, I want it to be a floating point value, and the value I want to set is x, so zero is the x position. And we have to do this for every single attribute value of the Python object, so this is setting from my class to the Python object bridge, Next, we grab the dictionary that we created um, for main, and in this case, we want to set the item in our dictionary that we grabbed 
This item is called pos. If the variable doesn't exist, it will just create it. That's what Python does. And we say set it with this. So this is the equivalent, if you imagine in the Python interpreter, of me saying pos equals open brackets, and if it's defaulting to zero, is, is doing that item of code. Um, and it's just set that in the dictionary main. If we were to um, then do the same for direction, and we do the same for speed. So that's basically set the dictionary in that instance of the Python interpreter. So those variables have been set. Next, we want to run the Python script. So um, here, pi run simple string is going to run our string. It is possible to run things with command line arguments and other things. In this case, I don't really want this. I'm just setting some global variables. So I run the string, and that is my text string that I've loaded in. So that's going to execute whatever that string is. If it's successful, it should have done something to my variables. Um, again, that depends on what I'm doing in the script itself. If the script fails, the interpreter embedding is fairly robust. It tends not to crash your program, so it's quite good for experimenting. Um, so now we need to do the reverse bridge. We need to get the data back from our Python script and set our attributes in the um, program itself. So this is doing the reverse. First we map our item string. So we would say from our dictionary, we want that um, variable called pos and map it back in. So what that's done is it's mapped it back to the dictionary and now we basically need to reset our attributes here. So mposx, pyfloat is double, we're converting that and from my list get item and I want from that object the zeroth item. So it's the reverse of what we did previously. The only other thing we need to do is we need to decrease the reference count of the object um, that's been um, created because otherwise the Python stack will get out of um, sync so we just um, reduce that reference count and go on to the next one and the next one. And what this has effectively now done is it's updated the um, attributes in our class. Um, that's it, effectively. So if we, if we look at this demo, what I've got is two two basic scripts here. So in this one, I'm importing math, I'm not actually using math, but um, I'm importing it. Um, and I'm saying pos0 equals pos0 plus direction times speed 0. So that's basically doing the x operations. Then I'm doing something for the y and something for the z. And then I'm just doing some bounds checking. So I'm saying if the position is greater than 4, then reverse speed. And if the position um, in the y is less than minus 4, then reverse speed. So this should oscillate something up and down like this. The second one, um, a lot more complex. I'm importing math and time again. Um, I'm grabbing the unit clock, the Unix clock. So this is going to give me a increasing time value in seconds. I'm setting some local variables for radius, two and four in this case. And then I'm doing a bit of math. So I'm saying uh, cos time times 100 times radius x, and math sine time 100 times radius z. And then I'm setting the x and the z um, values on that position attribute. So this should give us a circular motion going around like that. And I'm also demonstrating that printout will work in the console. So if I build this, um, if I run it in the console, what we should now see is um, this running. And we can see that that printout is going to happen um, once it starts running. It's loading the shaders. So you can see the printout's happening. But you can see here are my two agents. Um, agent 1 is the bronze one. Agent 2 is the silver one. But the power of this is, if I go back now, let me just change um, in Agent 1 script. Um, if I change the speed to 6, and if I change these bounds to 8, I save the file, 
And if I now press the button to reload, which for the agent one is one, you'll see that that script's reloaded, the program's still running, it's still interpreting, it's still running. And I can do exactly the same for agent two. So we can quickly go in and do some modifications of our programs. So for example, maybe I can say pos um, one, which is the y, equals cos, um, so math dot cos tm times 30 plus math dot sine cos tm times tm times 60 and I can multiply all of that by 8 which should just give us some uh, random thing hopefully if I reload that now you can see that we've got more of an elliptical motion going on. So again, I haven't restarted this program. This program's just running. I can revert back my script, so I can change that back to the original one. I just save that script, go back to my program, press two, and now you can see you've reloaded it. It hasn't reset the values, so it's still in its um, last Y position. What I really should do, if I want this to work properly, is go pause, um, 1 equals 0, 0.0 there. If I reload that, it should just get it back to its original position. But hopefully that gives you an idea of how this all works. Um, the code will be on my website very soon.